arcade games. Gambling for kids! Okay, so like most of you watching this video, I'm really too young to remember when arcades were the king of video games, but I at least remember the era when consoles were playing catch up with them and the biggest selling point of consoles were, it's the arcade, but at home and don't need quarters. Nowadays in a PC gaming, mobile gaming, PS5, Switch world, arcades really don't have a reason to be. You need to have some kind of very special gimmick or funky controller before it's something that you can't get with a PC or a console. Something like Boonga Boonga where you stick your finger up somebody's ass using the included ass controller. I wish I was making that up. But sometimes the gimmick can be just that the game itself is strange or just plain different. Like there's a game where you flip a card table over and you get points depending on how much destruction you caused. Oh, I see. But if I'm the one who flips a card table over, then I need to be put on antipsychotics to control my anger issues. Fuck off. So today we're going to be looking at weird and unusual arcade games that I know of and have researched from spending way too much time with MAME, which is the de facto arcade emulator if you don't know. In fact, people build arcade cabinets specifically to house machines that run MAME and a big nice list of games. So let's get the ball rolling with a game that actually uses a trackball, Snacks and Jackson. It's about a clown that bounces his nose up and down and has to collect all the food on screen before he can bounce his nose again? I told you these were gonna be weird. And what in God's name is going on with his neck? You ever seen those really old cartoons where the character is really stretchy? This is that, but horrifying. If you weren't scared of clowns before, this ought to fix that. You can sneeze to slow down the nose and get a little more time to get all the food, but don't eat the green peppers or they'll stun you for a second. Even more so if you eat the soap. Why would you eat soap? It's not like your mother shoved it down your mouth because you've been swearing too fucking much. What, your mother never did that to you? Next, we've got Boogie Wings, also known as the Great Ragtime Show in Japan. Now, not all of the games I'm gonna show you today are bad. In fact, this one is awesome, and it gets batshit crazy really quick. It's a shoot 'em up where you fly a plane that has a hook on the end and can hold a bomb or literally anything else. You can pick up several different enemies and objects and then throw them as a weapon. It gets utterly hilarious, especially when you pick up something like a tank or the head of a dinosaur statue. You can even pick up missiles and bombs that are shot at you and swing it back at the enemy. And that's just what the plane can do. If the plane blows up, the game is not over. You start walking on the ground and shooting and there's a metric fuck ton of vehicles and animals that you can ride. There's even joke vehicles like a scooter and a pogo stick. My God, guys, so much happens in this game. You destroy a Ferris wheel that spins out of control, laying waste to all in its path, you totally ruin an entire museum and all its exhibits, you ride on an elephant inside a blimp that is crash landing and float around inside shooting guys who are also floating, you kill Frankenstein's monster and then fight a gigantic evil Santa Claus robot. Holy shit. And then there's the little details, like sometimes a dog will chase you and bark at you. In the blimp, a bunch of the guards are sleeping and they have to quickly get out of bed and get their clothes on so they can fight you. And the fucking Blues Brothers follow you around. I guess the Blues Brothers were in more games than I thought. And if that ain't enough, the game has multiple endings. At the end of the final level, the final boss would give you the option of joining him if you choose to listen to a story. If you do, he'll make you play the museum level and final level again, and when you do beat them, you get the bad ending where you join the bad guy. If you say no, then the final boss battle begins, and when you beat it, you get the good ending and the special credits level. Even crazier, if you're playing with two players and one says yes and one says no, you and player two have to battle each other. I didn't get any footage of that, but that's pretty cool. But how is the gameplay? Well, it's very solid, but difficult. Of course, you can change the difficulty in the main settings, but normal seems to be a good fair challenge. I didn't like easy mode because there's areas where there's just no enemies at all in that mode. But overall, it's not the most difficult shoot 'em up I've ever played. In fact, somebody good at these will find it very easy. The bosses are pretty bullet spongy though, but hey, they had to get kids to give up their quarter somehow. 
You notice I'm not really cracking any jokes about this game. It's funny enough by itself. It's a genuinely good game with a great sense of humor, and I can't recommend it enough. You know this is a Data East game? I'm surprised this has never been in any type of compilation or re-release. And the cabinets are apparently super rare, so MAME is still really the only way to play Boogie Wings. Thank God for game preservation. Go to your favorite ROM site and get this game now. Next we have... Ugh. Exterminator. And my god, this game was ass with a capital everything. You're a disembodied hand that shoots at bugs, and you go from house to house and room to room killing bugs. Also of note is this is the first game to ever have digitized graphics. In other words, they took JPEGs and made them into sprites. That's what Mortal Kombat did. And it does give the game a should I say unique look? In the same way that I have a unique way of flipping cars upside down in a ditch. And oh my god, this game has got the worst control scheme of any game I have ever played in my entire life. So you would think that you can move wherever you want on the screen and shoot at the same time? <laughs> No! Even though you can move anywhere on the screen, you can only shoot if you are on the far left side of the screen. And when you're there, you have to use a separate joystick to aim the hand and shoot while you're in this gun mode. Like imagine playing Duck Hunt, but you have to stand on the far left side of your room. So, this game's cabinet, it was set up like a house, which is kind of cute, but more importantly, it had twin joysticks. Now, you would think the same person thing to do in MAME would be to map those joysticks to your left and right thumbsticks. Well, in my copy of the game, somebody got it in their mind that you should move with the left thumbstick and aim with the mouse. And I tried for the longest time to change it, but it wouldn't let me. So I had to hold the controller and the mouse at the same time and try to play this piss poor abomination. And it doesn't help that these wasps kept coming up to you and stinging you while you're trying to shoot. Oh my fucking god, this game is- this game is BAD! It's terrible! If I put quarters in this piece of shit, I would demand my money back from the manager. This is a god-awful sack of horse shit, and I hated every second that I played this. The thing that needs to be exterminated is the developers. Next. Country Girl. Oh, that sounds like something Dixie would like. Now, this is a poker game, but what's weird about it is that it's not just regular cards. They switched them out for these funky-looking cards, which has cowgirls on them. And instead of, like, hearts, diamonds, and spades and stuff like that, it's just a bunch slot machine symbols and when you pick a card it makes music so you can kind of do shit like this <laughs> still sounds better than Pink Floyd. I don't even know what I'm picking because I don't understand these weird cards. Am I winning? Am I losing? What? Caravan from New Vegas made more sense than this. Oh, it will straight up tell you if you've got a winning hand or not. Well, I need that because I'm lost. As a compulsive gambler, I can tell you there are better ways to play poker. I wish they had Uno in casinos. Uno's a man's game. Chiller. Oh boy, let me tell you about Chiller. The most infamous light gun game ever created. Chiller was made in 1980. 1986 by Exidy Games, and at the time was the goriest, most controversial arcade game of the 80s. Arcade owners straight up refused to buy it because of its level of violence. The game starts you off in a torture chamber, and your objective is to shoot the people on the torture devices until the monster meter on the top goes to zero. Man, this game makes an impact right off the bat. You got decapitated limbs, severed heads, blood everywhere, and people chained up to take your abuse. Look here, you can activate the gear and chop this guy's head off. And you can shoot this thing to crush this guy's head. This is pretty damn graphic for a game from the 80s when the most violent game was about jumping on a turtle shell and kicking it. Then you got this torture chamber where you lower a guy down and a crocodile starts eating him. And you can literally do it till he's nothing but a head and then his head just floats off. Also, I want to apologize if this video gives anybody seizures. This is what light gun games used to do to find out where you shot on the screen. You can also shoot this crank and it rips these people apart. Dead gum. Whoever made this game spent way too many hours watching the metric fuck ton of horror movies the 80s gave us, like Nail Gun Massacre and Violet Shit. The third level is kind of tame in comparison, unless you count this head with the eye gouging out, and the difficulty ramps way up in that you have to shoot more stuff and it's all moving. You can even shoot the dog. 
Then there's a cemetery where a girl is stuck in the ground and you can shoot her until her body completely falls apart. Which I can't show because there's pixel tits. And then there's the zombie ripping its own head off and throwing it into a fire pit. And that's about all there is to this game. It was violent, offensive, and can cause seizures. And it makes me want to play Time Crisis instead. You know this got put on the NES in one of those unlicensed weird looking cartridges? Brings a good bit on eBay. Then again, a half-eaten breakfast goes for big money on eBay nowadays. But God forbid I put something on there and suddenly no one wants to bid on anything. What are you too good for my copy of Super Mario Duck Hunt with the sticker peeled off? Fine, I don't want your fucking money. That's a lie. Give me your fucking money. Quiz and Dragons, a Capcom quiz game. You choose a fighter, then you fight enemies by answering questions? Why the fuck not? It's funny to me to think that these enemies are standing there asking you, The heart of country music is in which state? And I'm just like, you know, you're a dragon. You could blow fire at me or something. But no, they gotta quiz you. The difficulty is kind of all over the place. Like most of the history stuff I can get pretty good. But then it asks me about the Marx Brothers. Like, dude, my grandpa wasn't alive during the time the Marx Brothers were around. Who even are the Marx Brothers? Are they like the Russian version of the Super Mario Brothers? The Super Marx Brothers? The People's Mario Brothers, only on the Dendi. Wow, you're tough, but from here only hell awaits you. Bubbles. Oh, this must be hell, because that's definitely Satan. So in Bubbles, you gather up garbage that's in the sink until you get bigger, and then the drain starts flashing, and you're sacrificed to the Elder Gods in order to create a newer, more powerful bubble. Literally rinse repeat. What's this supposed to be? A brush or an angry CPU? Is it rising up to kill me? Rising, rising. There's a witch that comes out of the drain and starts cleaning up the sink with her broom and you can suck her up into your bubble body and have her become one with your being for extra points. This game isn't bad, but I wouldn't call it good either. It just is. And sometimes being a game that exists is enough. You want to talk about a weird game? How about Scud Hammer? This game had a big hammer controller hooked to it. The way it works is you would play rock, paper, scissors with a bunch of different people and every time they lost, you get a few seconds to hit them with the hammer. <laughs> It's pretty entertaining, honestly. Relieves a lot of stress to be able to beat the shit out of someone with a hammer. Maybe I need to do that more often. Other than that, there's not very much to say about it. It promises beating people with hammers, and it delivers. I guess I shouldn't expect big complex lore involving hammers and rock, paper, scissors. Although there is this one guy that makes a face that looks like the Vagineer. Undercover cops. Okay, this game gets interesting the moment you put a quarter in. What? Here she cops. Hershey cops. Here she cops. Here she comes. Here she cops. Piercing cups. Oh, don't let me spam it. Player select. Bubba. Okay, we gotta be Bubba. So it's a fairly standard beat em up. Nothing real crazy yet. Oh, dang. You can just wrench that I beam right out of the ground, huh? Ooh, that's gonna break a few bones. Wait, you're telling me these people were just laying here letting crows feast on them? I don't have any crows in my family tree. Hey, he's not gonna... He is! <laughs> it has picked up a Hummer. Man, only in beat-em-ups would somebody survive having a Hummer thrown in their face. You gotta be careful with this guy because he'll throw you into this trash compactor that one hit kills you. Apparently you can throw him in there too, but I ain't gamer enough to pull that off. Okay, I swear I've heard that scream before somewhere else. Yeah, it was in Link Gets the King's Dinner by Frustrated Squirrel. It won't hurt anyone friendly. In fact, it makes them talk. Oh! Sorry, Link. I can't give credit. See? You've got this one special attack where you slam a football into the ground and it hits all the enemies close to you, but when you use it, your health goes down? Why would you put a move in a game that drains your health? That's stupid. That's like if you... You know what? That's not like anything. That's just plain dumb. Move that drains your health. Fuck me. Then there's this weird fat bitch that keeps crying for some reason. My God, shut up. And then she'll slam the ground and make motorcycles come from the sky. Man, what a weird game. But it's time to move on. Okay, so here's the deal. I wasn't gonna mention Ninja Baseball Batman because I feel like most people already know about that one. But my patrons informed me that I do indeed need to talk about 
Ninja Baseball Batman or they're gonna come to my house and remove my bowels. So here's Ninja Baseball Batman. So the game was made by Irem or more specifically their American branch and was going to be a one player platformer but Irem decided to make it a four player beat em up because it would make more money that way. The four Batmen themselves are all named after big name baseball players at the time and they all have unique stats and special moves but again they have a move that drains your health. Not that surprising because Undercover Cops was also made by Irem. So I guess that was their thing that they do? Or maybe it was a way to get quarters faster. I don't know. There's a good video out there which tells the story of this game's development and also a website made by the game's creator who still holds the rights to the franchise. So if you want info on why this game exists, there's two good sources for you. We're just going to look at the gameplay. So anyway, you have your basic moves and specials, but you also have items you can pick up like a home plate that throws plates at enemies or a baseball you can throw at them. And enemies are all evil baseballs and gloves and other crazy crap. Like this pumpkin-headed robot guy. Don't know what's baseball about that. Or this anthropomorphic airplane? Okay, y'all are just pulling stuff out of your ass at this point. Or how about the monster truck that shoots deadly engine crocodiles? I'll tell you one thing this game is fun. The controls feel so good. The gameplay is really fun, even though it's hard as balls. I feel bad for anyone who had to play the real arcade cabinet because they probably never saw past the first level and got to see how glorious this game can get. I can't imagine how fun it is with four players. Makes me think of Turtles in Time. It makes sense because Ninja Turtles was a huge inspiration for this game. I never would have guessed. Overall, this game is fun as hell, and it's a crying shame it's never been released on a console. But thanks to MAME, anybody can play it, and with Netplay, you can play it online. One last thing I should mention about Ninja Baseball Batman is that the creator is starting up a comic book series called Ninja Baseball Spirits, which should see the light of day in 2023 if their Kickstarter goes well. So go throw the creator some money and bring the legend back to life. Here's something I hope never comes back to life. Special Forces by Senko. The first thing I wondered was, where's the sound? Well, there is no damn sound. Basically, you- Wait, is that Mr. T? It's a white Mr. T. Was this supposed to be an A-team game? In 1985, a crack abusing game company made a shitty game where you walk to the left, shoot racist stereotype terrorists, and get to the goal. Man, this game looks bad even for 1985. It looks like I made it. Look, I just did. You know what's funny? They throw grenades at you, and what you're supposed to do is shoot them. You shoot grenades grenades. Then there's this guy that throws knives that you absolutely cannot dodge and have to take the hit. And every time you die, you start at the beginning of the level again. So I've never really found a way to get very far in this game. I got to the second level, but that's as far as I got. Because you have these freaking snipers shooting at you from the top. This is not a good game. Not at all. You want to hear the worst part? This game was sold as a conversion kit for Donkey Kong Jr. So to set up an arcade cabinet for this game, you had to ruin a perfectly good Donkey Kong Jr. game. I sincerely hope not that many people did this. Imagine selling a conversion kit which turns a good game into a bad game. Apparently Senko only made this game and a billiards game before they went under. Maybe that's for the best. Trio the Punch, never forget me. Don't worry, I won't. Dude, I gotta be Shredder? Dude, I gotta be Shredder. So how this game works is you gather these yellow hearts on the stage, and when you do, you fight the boss. When you beat the boss, you get a chance in an extra life. Look at this guy. Ah! I'm not really understanding some of these levels. What's with the pipes and the disembodied hand? I don't get how you beat this boss. It keeps throwing these sheet projectiles that I can bounce on, and every time I jump, I bounce on them, and I end up dying. And then when you lose against the sheep, you become the sheep, and now you're the one throwing little sheep at people. Okay, fair enough. It looks less like a sheep and more like fiberglass insulation. Then you fight this guy and when you hit him, he screams, ouch, and his words hurt you. Words hurt, you know. <laughs> Yo, did he just dab? He just fucking dabbed. Well, that's a new Discord emote. Main shit bag. Ooh. So I take it from the S bag. That's a sandbag he's carrying around, like one of those things you punch on. That's a weird thing to use as a weapon. Not as weird as the waffler, though. Waffle man! I'm the Waffler! Whoa, whoa! Oh, so, 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 so. 
the Out Foxies. Now, this is not a furry game like it sounds. Disappointing, I know, but this is still a pretty good game. These characters are all hitmen and women, and they've all got contracts on each other. And you fight each other by running around the map trying to find guns to shoot each other with. And you know what? The way these arenas are set up, the way the camera pans out, kind of smash-like? Except you got a life bar and the lack of a toxic community. I have more respect for the dog shit I stepped in this morning than I do a Smash player. They're a parasite on society that needs to be cleansed from the earth. So you can end a round of one of these games pretty quickly by getting the rocket launcher. I would imagine in a real two-player game, the whole game would be decided on who gets the rocket launcher first. I love that one of the characters is just straight up a monkey. He's kind of hard to kill too because he's such a small target. Yeah, come over here, you little monkey bastard. I'm gonna fuck you up with his sword. Come on. Come on over here. Oh, that's a grenade. Eat rocket launcher, bitch! Wow, I love that it makes this plane tilt. That's a really good effect. Yeah, this game's pretty fun. I could see myself playing this with somebody. It's an odd one for sure, but not a bad game at all. Wonderful. Next, Dino Rex. Now, I've heard this is not a very good game, and it's got some of the worst digitized graphics I've ever seen. My main problem is it's a fighting game, and I suck at fighting games because I'm too lazy to go online and look up a list of moves for every single game especially something like this where i'm only gonna play it once ever so i always end up getting my ass kicked and not having a good time but to be honest this game does not feel good to play the controls feel really sluggish and there's a lot of times where your inputs don't hardly do anything if anything at all like how is this fucker doing that i can barely get this fucker to whip his tail i am straight up getting my anus demolished <laughs> Oh yeah, that's not annoying in the slightest. Hey Barney, quit shaking your head and fight, you idiot. <laughs> There's one funny thing that happens if you lose. A pterodactyl comes and eats you. Okay, I know I've heard that sound effect before. I'm pretty sure Hanna-Barbera and Filmation have used it at some point. Look at this son of a bitch chewing my neck. Dad gummit. Yeah, this game is wet ass. Let's get to the last game and call this a day. Oh boy, people that know their arcades are probably going, oh no, not this one. Pula Rula. Is that that Irish song? Pula Rula Rula. Oh, well this is cute looking. This don't look all that weird. It looks kind of nice actually. Oh, and we're already fighting a boss. Oh, this is pretty cool looking i like the background damn it the time stopped <laughs> i'm throwing out some cuss words huh yo what the hell is this thing is it a jellyfish with a mustache what the fuck oh what is that i don't like that nope i don't like that thing one bit do you go to the town ahead that town is so head that no persons can live in good grief who proofreaded this well that should be an end to the weird stuff at least <laughs> I have a question. What the heck? I think I see why people call this a weird game now. This town is controlled by the dream of a- Now something weird is supposed to happen right here, I believe, but it isn't happening in this game. I don't know why. I'll have to look into that. What? Play the Japanese version? Oh. That's interesting. Wouldn't it be something if you opened the door and a big dick came out of it? <laughs> Actually, the only thing that comes out of it is a pink elephant. We do get some tongue loving from this thing. And a nice shot of some guy's butt. That's what we need in our video games nowadays. More man butts. Or not. Yo, check this guy out. He whips his hair back and forth. He whips his hair back and forth. You know what? After that level, the game goes back to being all cutesy and normal again. It's like all that weird shit never happened. There's still a few weird things about it. Like, one of your power-ups is you call up a guy in a microwave and he picks up a bunch of the enemies and puts them in a ball inside the microwave. You know, it's better if you don't ask. Then there's this MC Escher looking level that looks pretty wild. What the hell is copy pasted all over this wall? Some kind of demon? Oh, I see. It's a night angel. Night angel. That sounds like an 80s metal band. You know how I said this game would stop being weird? I lied. Now you've got this final boss whose head is a globe. It's the world. This guy definitely acts like a final boss. He's got a lot of health. He's hard to take down and his moves do a lot of damage. And if that ain't enough, you have to beat him twice. 
but with enough quarters, he'll finally go down, and all is well in the kingdom. And that, my friends, concludes our look at strange and unusual arcade games. We had good times, we had bad, but we got through it. At least I hope you did. If you clicked off halfway through the video, you're not here to hear me say fuck you, so fuck you in particular, Mr. Theoretical Man. I made up in my mind that clicked off halfway through the video. I hate you, imaginary person. I wish I never made you up. Die in an imaginary fire. Let's just end the video.